History is often not fair, and by that I don't mean that the bad guys often win, although they do. I mean that really awesome and incredible things that you would think would be remembered in the collective consciousness aren't. And sometimes there's good reason for this. Sometimes things happened a long, long time ago, and all the civilizations involved have been wiped out. However, there are times history is just being unfair in general. The War of the Triple Alliance is one of these events. You would think that the bloodiest war in the Western Hemisphere's history would be the American Civil War or the Spanish conquest of some native civilization. But no, the real answer is a war that was far more eclectic, bizarre, and surprising. So in the history of the world, you have some really great conquerors, Genghis Khan, Alexander, and Napoleon. And then you have the far longer list of figures who thought they were Genghis Khan, Alexander, and Napoleon. Your Louis XIV's, your Gaddafi's, your Saddam Hussein's, or your Napoleon III's. And at the top of that list would have to come Francisco Solano Lopez, the dictator of Paraguay in the 1860s, or around the same time as the American Civil War or the reign of Napoleon III. And he took tiny Paraguay with a population of around half a million, and in a blaze of stupidity and glory, simultaneously declared war on Brazil, Argentina, and Uruguay, which had a combined population of 11 million. And it's hard to think up adjectives to describe how badly this failed. Paraguay likely lost 60% of this population in the war, and by the end of the war, only about 12% of the population was male, and the Catholic Church de facto legalized polygamy to deal with the massive amounts of widows involved, and in the final days of the war, Francisco Lopez would wander around the capital, pistol in hand, looking for young men who were not involved in the conflict and telling them to go out and fight. And so this timeline asks the absurd. What if Lopez actually was a military genius? What if little Paraguay was blessed with an Alexander or even a Charles XII who could have won this war for them? History is filled with many examples of wars in which the demographically smaller side nearly won or actually did win, the English versus the French in the Hundred Years' War, the Greeks and the Persians, the Finns and the Russians, or the Vietnamese and the Americans. Why not here? Why not now? What would a Paraguay led by a military genius end up looking like, and how would that affect South America and the world in general? That is the question of this alternate history. You know I would call this video a Lopez wank, but that sounds like a Latino porn, so I'm going to keep away from that. So I may not be one of the great military geniuses of history, but I am pretty close, and I was thinking about how the Paraguayans could have won this war, and I come to think that the Boer War is a pretty good template. For those of you who don't know, the Boer War was a war fought between some Dutch farmers in South Africa against the British Empire at its height, and it was fought at the very end of the 19th century. And the Boers fought the war very well and put the British in a lot of hurt. And they did this through a couple very smart moves, the first of which is that they brought superior firepower to the British with both artillery and personal firearms before the war started. And secondly, when they were on the offensive, they used the superior firepower to besiege the British cities in South Africa. When they were on the defensive, they fought an entirely guerrilla campaign, or close to it, in which they used their superior mobility to basically never give the British battle and constantly harass them, and Paraguay and the Boer Republics are about the same size. And meanwhile, when they did give the British battle, they fought almost entirely from defensive earthworks and trenches, and this is the era in which firepower advanced faster than tactics, meaning the defense had an enormous advantage, and they could cause the British a lot of hurt in this way. And the British only finally did win this war when they basically put almost the entire Boer population in concentration camps, and they used a quarter of a million men to subdue the relatively small Boer Republic, and none of Paraguay's enemies had anything close to the military abilities of the British Empire. I think if the Paraguayans took a few plays out of the Boer playbook, they would have done very well. And I think technology was very important. This is an era in which military technology was developing very rapidly, and especially for the defensive. And in 1864, the year the War of the Triple Alliance started, it was the year the American Civil War was entering its World War I section of trenches. 
and I think that if the Paraguayans had bought repeating rifles and a few Gatling guns, they could have put them in a very, very strong position, because in our timeline, most of the factions involved, including the Paraguayans, were using out-of-date muskets. And in my opinion, the two things that lost the Paraguayans the war were control of the river and artillery. The most important part of the front, I would say, would be control of the La Plata River, which was basically the only artery of supply and communication across the whole front, and so control of the La Plata was remarkably decisive. And when the Paraguayans lost control of the river, they practically lost the war. And I think the purchase of one or two ironclads could have basically turned control of the La Plata River in the early stage of the war for the Paraguayans. And secondly, the Paraguayan military also got shattered by superiority of Brazilian artillery, and so I think purchasing of more advanced artillery could have given the Paraguayans a decisive advantage. The Paraguayan military at the start of the war was around 70,000 men. This was far greater than the Triple Alliance combined, which had around 27,000 men. And so if the Paraguayans moved quickly and gained control of the River Plata very quickly, and then defended their gains using trench warfare, I think they could have done unbelievably well. So I'm not a military genius with the computing power of HAL 9000, so I can't predict every maneuver in this war, but let's say the Paraguayans are able to dish the Brazilians a few crippling defeats that humiliate Brazil into pulling out of the war, and giving the Paraguayans a thin strip of land along the La Plata River, and Mato Grosso, a province that is majority Spanish-speaking and the Paraguayans conquered early in the war, and it's only really accessible to the rest of Brazil via Paraguay and the La Plata River. Brazil at this point was a loose confederation run by the aged Pedro II, so we can assume a few crippling defeats would bring the unified facade falling apart and the Brazilian elite would demand that he end the war. Most of Argentina outside of the neighborhood of Buenos Aires was pretty lightly settled, and Argentina as a whole had a pretty light population density, so it would not be willing to exchange very high casualties for underpopulated lands in the north. Argentina and Brazil would both cede a thin strip of land on the La Plata River. Ceding Buenos Aires would drive the Argentines batshit, as it's so central to their nation, thus it would stay in Argentine hands. Finally, Paraguay only entered this war because the pro-Paraguayan side in Uruguay, the Blancos, had lost control to the pro-Triple Alliance side, the Colorados. With its large allies Argentina and Brazil giving up, the Colorados of Uruguay would give up and the Blanco-Paraguayan puppet would gain control in Uruguay. So we've created this bizarre Paraguayan empire, stretching the whole length of the La Plata River, and it's in a very strong position, with some of the most fertile land in the world united by a single river system. And you'd think that this would make Lopez happy, but considering Lopez, that seems remarkably unlikely. However, making a, what if Lopez was a military genius but got Alexander Syndrome and kept going and still lost the War of the Triple Alliance but finally got bogged down 800 miles into Brazil, isn't a snappy title. And so let's say that Lopez finally has the wisdom to understand how much little Paraguay can digest in a single sitting, and stops here. You would think given such strong geographic perks, Paraguay would thrive and rise to first world status. You would be wrong. This is Latin America, and none of the nations involved have strong enough civic institutions to have sustained and stable economic growth. This isn't the fault of the IMF, American imperialism, or geography, it's the fault of the Spanish colonizers who gave their colonies no self-governance and exploited the regions for their population and resources, without cultivating stable governments and economies. European investors would not realize this, and viewing the success of the Paraguayan military as indicative of the success of Paraguayan government and society would invest large amounts of money in the late 19th century. This would mean Asuncion would have lots of nice period buildings, but they would default on their debts when a recession would come along, and as they would not have developed stable industries that could create exports that could balance out their currencies. This is the issue with the entirety of Latin America, and I don't see why Paraguay would be any different. I made Lopez a military genius, not a political or economic one. Nations in this region keep long grudges. The Bolivians are still pissed off that Chileans took their coast 150 years ago, the Argentines still think they own the Malvinas, and my Brazilian fans still can't get over the death of Pedro II. And this would be no different with Brazil and Argentina in this timeline with the War of Paraguayan Hegemony. They would know that 
the war was won almost entirely by Lopez's genius, and this would force them to reflect upon their own lack of good leadership in a war they clearly should have won. And so as World War I would come close, the Argentines and the Brazilians would ally against the Paraguayans. World War I in general, the Entente were the side of the status quo, while the Central Powers were the side of the new troublesome nations. And in this region, Paraguay would clearly be the new troublesome power that had only showed up in the last two or so generations. And Paraguay, being in the central geographic position, and having a large German ethnic minority, would side with the central powers. Meanwhile, Argentina was a strong ally of Britain, and it, alongside with Brazil, would side with the Entente. This is a war the Entente would win. Argentina experienced enormous population and economic growth in the years before World War I, and the Paraguayan Empire would be so long and thin that it could be easily cut up by its enemies. Meanwhile, without control of the Atlantic Ocean, there's really no way Germany could send aid to Paraguay. Well, Britain being the greatest naval power in the world, sure as hell could help its allies. And so Paraguay would decisively lose this war, and its borders would return to what they were before the War of Paraguayan Hegemony. Would the Paraguayans maintain a grudge and spend World War II rearming and trying to reconquer their empire? No. The truth is that most states can only be beaten to the ground once before they give up. This is why the Burgundians, Hittites, and Swedes only get a few paragraphs in histories of the world as empires. And you need remarkably strong civic institutions and national will to be able to rearm again after being smashed into the dirt. And remember, Germany only had to be defeated twice before it gave up being an empire, and it's Germany. And Paraguay would lack the population, industry, or civic institutions to be able to rearm again, and they would cherish their memories of national glory and empire, but they would come to know that it only came from one man, and wouldn't be attainable again. Honestly, not much else changes in this timeline. Paraguay is chastened, Brazil and Argentina are happy, and everyone tries to forget that this all happened. The world turns to relative normalcy after two or three generations of disturbances. What if Altist, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that video, please subscribe, comment, tell a friend, send me several thousand dollars via Patreon, all good options, especially the last one. If you want to hear more South America or bizarre war topics, please comment that. If you want me to get back to more normal topics, also comment that. Thank you so much, and have a good day.